everybody, welcome back to another episode of Extinction Rebellion TV East of England. Today's discussion is human potential in times of crisis and to discuss this with us is Olympic gold medalist and activist Etienne Stott. Etienne, how you doing man? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much, Ben. Yeah, um, looking forward to tonight. It's, it's cool. Um, got a lot of love for the east of England. And uh, I think it's really nice to, to be invited on here. So, so thank you very much. No worries, man. Do you want to uh, do you want to give a bit of an introduction to yourself? Yeah, why not? Um, so I guess I can sort of start from where I am now. I'm a member of Extinction Rebellion. I'm based in Nottingham. I'm, I'm working in Nottingham Group, and I work in the Midlands as well, doing stuff for for XR. Um, but I spent majority of my life uh, doing canoeing and kayaking, white water canoeing and kayaking more specifically. So I started. Um, canoeing first time when I was in the Scouts when I was about 10 or 11 years old and um, I, I was brought up in bed and I got into the Scouts got got into paddling there and then I uh, started to get involved in competitions it became really really serious and by the time I was about 13 years old I was dead set on becoming like an Olympic and world champion all that and I basically worked ridiculously hard over many years I had loads and loads of ups and downs um, you know some really difficult and challenging times and <clears throat> some really amazing times and I guess my career will be always defined by um, winning the Olympics in London 2012 um, and I was by then um, I started off as an individual athlete but by the time I won the Olympics I was um, racing in a two-man canoe called C2 uh, with a guy called Tim Bailey who's my best friend my brother in arms and my uh you know, most one of the most amazing people. And uh, we won the games in London, which is just an incredible experience. And I guess I might talk about that at some point. And then um, I carried on after that for four more years, trying to go to the Rio games, tried to um, to get to the games, but didn't make it, ended up um, being the reserve crew. And then I retired in 2016 and I was interested in all sorts of things, but eventually um, I found myself in Extinction Rebellion and I'm really, really proud. You know, I was there on the, I, I didn't, I wasn't in London for the Declaration of Rebellion. I watched that on TV, uh, on Facebook, um, but I did go down. I did the first NVDA training session and then went down to the, to the, to the, um, first uh, the first go it was on the 19th of november in 2018 and that was super cool and i did my part there i was involved in peaceful civil disobedience and i feel like you know i've kind of been there for a long time and i've been there ever since and it's you know really now it's to me the most important thing in my life and that's what i'm doing so that's why i'm here and there's all sorts of bits i've skipped but i guess we can talk about whatever <laughs> whatever you want and whatever else want anyone else wants to talk about well, it's a great place for you to have uh, landed. And um, to kind of move on from what you were just saying, I think I was really interested to discuss with you, the, the Olympics is about pushing the human potential physically, especially if you want to, to, to achieve a gold medal like you did, congrats. Um, but also the Olympics is arguably one of the most competitive events on earth. So a lot of determination is required. Um, mm. The injustice of the system we live in today and the environmental crisis being a symptom of that. Do you think as a society, um, we have what it takes to truly overcome this crisis? Yeah, that's a lovely question. <laughs> and I, absolutely, I do. Um, the simple starting point is, you know, my journey through sport, you know, it's easy to say with hindsight, you know, when you've won an Olympic medal, people look at you and say, oh, it must have been this that made him that good or must have been that that made him that good. Or I might even think there were some things that made me this good or that good. But the truth is, when I was 11 years old or when I was 13 years old, there's very little actually that I could have said was going to indicate that I'd be capable of such a thing. And in fact, you know, no one's ever been me in my body and never, never known what it could do you know so that's the interesting thing about being an athlete you start and you actually realize what your your body can do or what in fact what you're actually your mind is capable of what your you know yourself you yourself as a person are capable of what your spirit is capable of because you kind of grow in it and you strengthen it daily you know over many many years and so for me my journey sort of showed me that you know i don't consider myself to be 
really special in any particular way you know I'm, no one in my family is sporty no one in my family is particularly competitive you know they don't really see it like that um, but I actually think that you know people can do amazing things because you don't actually know what you can do until you've kind of done it and if you've given it a really good go you tend to find out something very important which I think is you were often able to do more than you might have imagined or or, or more than is kind of at first glance what you might think and so I think absolutely in this situation that we're in now you know in this climate and ecological emergency things and, and right now we're in a you know pandemic emergency we actually um, see human nature kind of doing extraordinary things because I think actually you know human beings can do because we're kind of complicated right we just can have on a whim we can just decide oh I'm going to do this today or I've been doing this for so long I'm just going to stop doing it today it's never you know sometimes not quite as simple as that and there's all sorts of reasons that build up to that point but people can just do radically different things can turn on a pinhead you know and, and change everything and and the one person can influence many people as well so i kind of believe in human potential because i kind of feel like i'm a product of show you know of, i've done something which is scarcely believable even to me now yet all around the world we see extraordinary things all the time people doing extraordinary things sometimes extraordinarily bad but actually extraordinarily good things happen and i actually think that's exactly what we need to do in in these times now people will be will be pushed to places where amazing things can just spontane almost spontaneously happen if they you know you're just looking from the outside but actually all the things that have led up to that point are not spontaneous it means something has made to that to that position where someone just goes right i'm gonna do this you know someone has a change of heart or has a fantastic idea or links up with somebody and they change things and it can just cascade from there so for me absolutely you know human potential i believe is is always an incredible beautiful resource that is within every single person waiting to be unearthed and expressed and i think we need that right you know right now i think uh, absolutely and i think um you know the clock is ticking and we need that more than ever um what what was what was that journey can you remember that moment of having that feeling when you realized you wanted to go into the olympics and try and achieve um um winning a gold medal in the olympics and so forth like because i think there's a lot of people that might feel they have that potential but might be conflicted or not sure how to unlock it yeah i mean it's really odd right because there's you know looking back again there's so many things had to happen for me you know and, and my crewmate tim to win the olympics you know i had to meet tim and we had to get on well and then we had to you know, I had shoulder injuries and we had all sorts of, we met all sorts of influential people on the way and there were all sorts of opportunities that we're very lucky to have, you know, been put in the way of. Um, and I suppose for me, it sort of says, you know, we are this incredible, I suppose I, I, I always say, you know, I don't particularly think I was particularly good at any particular thing. I just made choices consistently in a direction of, of, what I wanted to achieve. And I suppose it's that idea of, you know, one of the Extinction Rebellion principles values, you know, we set our, our goals on, on what is necessary. You know, we do what, what we think is necessary. And I suppose I really identify with that because basically if you have an idea of something that you want and every single day we're confronted with, you know, hundreds and maybe even thousands of choices, some micro choices, some actually quite profound choices. But if we choose consistently in a direction that we want to go in, you will find yourself in somewhere potentially quite extraordinary because you'll have what you know you'll have gone a long way from the kind of average path that you can take if you just you know go left and right left and right left and right but if you go left 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 or right 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 you'll get somewhere very different and I think that's kind of what I think you know in sports you're really used to doing that that's kind of what you have to do and the more choices you make in favor of your goal the, the better the chances are you will have succeeded and of course you can't tell whether you will because there's a limit to potentially your your body but actually in a sport like mine, which is quite technical, there's lots of things you can be good at. And it's very, very similar, I believe, to the game that we're in now as, you know, as, a, as a, an activist or as a, an organism. You know, there's lots of different ways around this, which, you know, we just have a, you, you, set, you set a target for what you want to happen and you, you just try and feel your way towards that. And that's really what you do in sports. Very, very rarely you get somebody just comes in and says, 
you know, this is the magic formula. In some sports, there is a bit of a, you know, kind of maybe a magic formula, but in my sport, no one knows how to do it. You've got to learn it on the job. And you, you know, if you come across a good way of doing it, you, you keep doing it. And I was lucky, lots of luck, you know, and, and lots of hard work when I had that luck. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting journey, I suppose. And I mean, I, as an individual, I'm curious because I mean, I mean, we're almost preaching to the choir with XRTV in some cases, um, <laughs> but there are many uh, individuals out there who, who aren't activists and haven't taken that journey. Mm. And they might not necessarily be as stressed as maybe we are um, about the huge environmental crisis that mm. we face. But but what 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 was your journey into activism? It's really weird. Honestly, I I, I kind of look back and think, how did I get here? Um, you know, I think I, I really want to look back. I think both my parents are, you know, we watched the news and stuff, you know, and I remember things happening in the news and my parents reacting to it and kind of you know we talked about it. I don't think we were ever really like really political political, but you know we had we did talk about these sorts of things. And as an, an athlete, you know, I, I kind of, we traveled around the world, you know, I've been all around the world and I've been to some strange places, you know, by the end of my career, I went, I did a, I did a training camp in Dubai on, in a, on a, on an artificial river in the middle of a desert and Dubai is a, is a weird country, you know, uh, there's, a, there's, you know, it's, I got to be honest, it's like a sort of strange facade behind this you know a glittering place but it's actually really not super cool in my estimation in lots of ways and you know I also did a training camp in Brazil in Rio before the before the games just in case I would have been called up to go and the canoe course there was built in the middle of a favela you know favela had been cleared and they built this you know amazing canoe course for all the world's athletes just to come around and, and play or play on and, you know, I was becoming more and more aware of, you know, I remember um, being, I went to a big march in 2009, I think it was organized by Greenpeace before one of the cops. And it was a kind of like a bit of a moment, you know, we need to get on this. And I remember I went on it because I was already kind of interested in this stuff, but it didn't even show up in the news the next day. And I was like, what, what's that all about? There were like 20,000 people on this march and it didn't even, didn't do. And then the cop, the cop that came straight after it was a failure. And then really, so by the end of my career, I was becoming more and more kind of the dissonance really was becoming a bit more troubling to me, really quite troubling. You know, this sort of, you know, lifestyle that I was leading and also the places I was going. And and I think I was really interested in, you know, I wanted to work as a, as a youth worker and I wanted to help people to explore their human potential, the same sort of thing that I had done myself you know I've been lucky to have people to help me to go you know go through this journey and I just you know I was I was learning more and I, I think I I went on this thing this near Nottingham it's called a vegan camp out because I, I remember I turned vegetarian when I retired from canoeing almost straight away after I retired and then I went I, I became vegan a, a little bit later on and I went to this vegan camp out and I just you know because I, I was kind of interested but I wasn't like really that you know I just thought go um and then probably thought there's some some cool girls there that I could meet uh, and, then, and then um I ended up spending almost all the whole weekend in this one room where they were doing workshops about activism like direct you know a lot of it was direct action stuff you know they were kind of talking and there was loads of stuff about Martin Luther King and I was like wow this was, I was blown away and I kind of was driving home after that and thinking you know I want to kind of do this but I, I wasn't you know, I, I believe I, I believe big time in veganism, and I'm really interested in it. But it wasn't really my kind of place. I didn't quite lock into it. But I thought this is a really cool thing to do, and this is a really good thing to do. And it was just literally a few months later. And also, I was studying. The other thing that really happened to me is I was studying psychology with Open University, and I was doing social psychology, and. I, part of my course was called critical social psychology and that's about exploring power and how psychology kind of helps to um, kind of reinforce power and, and actually is quite some quite amazing stuff in there and all of these things kind of came along and I remember one of my friends is from Sweden and he was in the canoe canoe team and I was chatting to him once and he said oh mate have you seen this stuff it's, it's something new happening and he, and he showed me about Extinction Rebellion and the and the Declaration of Rebellion Day 
and we watched it and we're like wow this is cool and it turns out this guy is a friend called is called uh, eric he actually went to with Greta Thunberg on some of her early school strikes right really early on so he's right right into it and and we watched it and I was like yeah this is cool and I sort of thought well actually this is kind of where I need to be doing because I suppose my belief in human potential what I believe we're capable of as human beings we're going nowhere right now you know we're kind of running to a brick wall basically and I just believe too much in um, what human beings can do it'd be such a tragedy to waste all that you know beautiful amazing um yeah power that human beings have if we just basically kill ourselves and i just don't want that i just don't want that i can't believe we're going to do it and i i feel i can have to stop it and i feel as a as an olympian as a something of a public figure because people think that olympians are, are cool and and you know somewhat have some authority in this in this society that we have, I always felt as a, as a somebody like I should use my voice and I thought, well, I should actually use my voice here. And I became really convinced of the danger. And I also became really convinced of the inner, you know, the ineffectiveness of everything that's gone before. And I thought, well, actually the sort of civil disobedience model that Extinction Rebellion was advocating, I was like, I actually think this is, our best chance and that that was kind of it really and I believe in the project and the more I've the more I've learned about XR the more I've kind of immersed myself into it and learned and the more amazing things I see about it you know the self-organizing system and the principles and values and the you know all the the stuff about oppression that I've been learning about all the stuff about you know the massive educational journey that you go on it's just for me it's been you know so so much has kind of linked in with what i thought before but it's also expanded everything that i thought about before as well it's been yeah fantastic yeah i think that very much links into before what you were saying about obviously the decisions that you made and those opportunities you took which led up to the moment where you achieved that gold medal i think it's very much the same with extinction rebellion it's the same with me i mean i, I forgot to introduce myself at the start of the <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a wildlife activist and I remember I was thinking about what you just said about the Greenpeace march I remember going on protests and marches uh with picket signs outside parliament and seeing thousands of people and thinking oh this is going to be all over the news and then yeah. the next day it would get like a column in the Guardian um and then seeing what Extinction Rebellion did and how it transformed consciousness around these environmental issues and basically these issues that are a symptom of injustice Mm. and how it's teaching people how it's awakening people about the crisis but something that that, that you've always said is that um you know it's not just about extinction rebellion being an environmental movement it's about you know fighting injustice mm. um and and i think how how do you envision the movement as a whole do you do you because this isn't just about you know planting trees and getting rid of fossil fuels is it Mm, no, I mean, I sort of think it's a, you know, I guess we're kind of perhaps on a bit of a journey, each person, you know, and, and me, certainly my journey, I guess, you know, you have a sort of gateway into the next step or a step that allows you onto the next step. And I suppose, you know, I suppose maybe like plastic pollution in the seas, you know, it's really a terrible problem, but a lot of people can identify with that issue, right? You know, they kind of see plastic and they see it floating around and they see it falling into the river and they can imagine, you know, that's, you know, um, it, it, it going in, into the ecosystem there. And, you know, David Attenborough, people like that have done an amazing job of showing that. And then you start to think, okay, so what about this then? You know, this is, this is one thing. And then you might start to think, oh, you know, okay, what about more about the environment? So for me, you know, I just started to learn about, you know, I think global warming, let's be clear, you know, that's the thing, you know, I remember watching a talk by Kevin Anderson, you know, and Professor Kevin Anderson to me is an absolute legend. He just lays it out absolutely very, very clearly. And I suppose then you, for me, I was really, okay, this is really, really important. But then I started to learn that these things are connected because we're actually when you dig down a little bit deeper, actually we're kind of seeing that, you know, one of the reasons we're struggling to, I don't know, you can't use the word solve, but to grapple with this question of the way that we're treating our earth is that our democracy isn't really working for us. And also start to understand that the way our economy is set up just 
isn't really working. And again, this came from my psychology stuff as well, you know, about learning about power and how, you know, the, the, well, I guess it's like neoliberal, you know, extreme free market kind of economics is fundamentally not suitable for continued life. And I think it's really interesting because I started to learn about this. I learned about, you know, I never heard that word neoliberalism before until I did my psychology degree. And I was like, how do I know about this since doing psychology? It was quite amazing. But then I started to realize actually, you know, there's alternatives, you know, just because you don't believe in, you know, this kind of version of the way of doing economics doesn't make you a raving communist or something. There's other ways of doing it between a lot, but a lot of people really think that that's the only alternative. There's no alternative apart from what we're doing. And so for me, you kind of learn when you start to look at it more and you start to see a little bit. And then quite recently, actually, I did a really cool workshop on oppression and I started to work. So, okay, this is all tying in together because this is all about the kind of violence of our, of our toxic system, I suppose, of our, you know, our culture, the way that we're brought up. We don't even, you know, don't even notice that it's kind of violent and oppressive because we're totally immersed in it. Like, you know, I guess a fish doesn't notice the water. It just sees it as its place, but it's actually really real. So that, again, to me, they all tie in together and it's about our human needs not being met. And it's about how our, I don't know, maybe even our spirit has been kind of almost, uh, I don't know, diverted or captured by this idea that we have to climb over each other to get what we want. And that this version of happiness that kind of been that we imagine or that perhaps we're kind of almost taught is not really what's going to work for us. Actually, we need a living planet and we need connection with human beings to, to be, to be content and pe you know, at peace. Um, and I actually believe that these things are all kind of rolled into one, but I think the environment is a kind of way into that. And then you start to learn about all these other things, you know, and about, I don't know, colonialism, man, you know, there's so much to learn about that, you know, it's incredible, but these are all, they're all actually really quite strongly related. And I think that for me is a lovely, I do enjoy learning. I find, you know, learning about things really interesting. And I, I, all of these things to me are all kind of bound up together. And I think it's fascinating to understand them and, or try because I'm absolutely, you know, I'm no expert. I'm just on my journey with that with lots of other people, I suppose. Yeah, I, th I think I'm giving you very long answers here, by the way, Ben. I can't no, 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 so you answers. don't have to strain yourself. No, no for questions. Is what I want. I'm like, I'm just trying to like, <laughs> uh, you know, take what you've said and then be like, okay, well, how can I move on from this? And 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 listening to to, to what you just said, obviously, you're very passionate about fighting for the justice of a better world. Yeah, and. You know, the, 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 the one thing that, 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 that I hear quite frequently, especially some of my friends who are in my outer circle when I'm not in the echo chamber of wildlife activists and climate activists and extinction mm. rebellion, it's the one thing we all hear is that, like, well, the planet's fucked and everyone just kind of shrugs. Um, but and this, is, this is what I really wanted to pick your brains with, is that, like, I, it is a huge hurdle. It is a huge hurdle solving this. Mm. And that's why people are intimidated by it. But then again, so is the Olympics. I mean, I, I don't really know the figures, but the percentage of, uh, you know, the chances of winning a gold medal. Oh, yeah. Is, 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 you know, zero to none. And so when you're, you know, you, I can understand why an individual like you would have that optimism, mm. but not everyone does. So I'm no. just, I'm just like, is there some sort of, is there some sort of like, not secret, like obviously it's not porridge oats is the secret but like <laughs> what is the you know the, that building up that determination that we can yeah. confront this as a as a human race um and that a better world another world is possible as we say yeah yeah um i suppose first of all i suppose it's a little bit how you you want to i suppose it's it comes down to empowerment i suppose yeah because it's completely let, let's say i uh, just re bring it back to a sporting analogy, but if someone doesn't think that they're going to be successful, then there's absolutely no um, chance they're going to take the steps to, to make, to try and be successful. You know, if someone tells them over and over again that they're rubbish at 
this or that, then they're not going to try this or that because they're just going to they think they're going to waste their time. If for some reason they've built up this experiences and they've perhaps just, um, I've just realized it's the clapping part, mate. It's the NHS clapping. What should we do? Should we clap? Yeah, man. You've got some inspiring words, Etienne. I don't know how long we need to... I actually I'm going to go out of my window. Just give me one minute. I'll just shout out the window. I'm just going to turn on my light because it's got really dark. <laughs> we have live footage right now of Olymp uh, Olympic gold medalist, medalist Etienne Stott clapping and shouting out the window. Well, it's going off in Nottingham, mate. How is, how is Nottingham? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people banging pots and pans out their windows. Yeah, well, it's in. Ca I mean, I'm just in Cambridge. But... I'm going again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so I must. I, I must admit, we don't, if anyone wants to um, ask any questions for the chat, uh, just post them in the Facebook live stream chat that should be on Facebook, um, or comment. I think you have to comment. Um, but yeah, and please, um, please clap for the NHS. Um, and I mean, I mean, I mean, this whole this whole situation with um, uh, coronavirus, as tragic as, as it is, it has, has shown that we can make decisions. We, you know, we can do the U-turn, can't we? Basically, mm. um, and I think, you know, it's 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 it it, it does show. I mean, it, it shows somewhat human potential. Um, but do you think? I mean, there's no. I really. I mean. Can we go back to the destructive that you know our, our inaction and destruction of the natural world after this? Do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's such a big question to ask. I don't know. If that's a. Question. But it sort of links back to what I was about to say: is that you know, human beings, in my experience, and my experience of athletes and sports people, is that people aren't going to invest into something that they don't think is going to reward them with some good feelings, right? You know, yeah. and I, you know, investing in rewards is not quite the right word, but you know, if you don't think something's going to work for you, you're not going to do well in it. You know, you're not going to put, put, put effort into it, but if you can come up with a credible plan and a credible way that you think, you know, this could work, then you think, right, you know, if someone says to you to go and get better at canoeing, you know, go to the gym three times a week, lift this up, put that down 50 times, you'll get better at canoeing or go canoeing five times a week and you'll get better at canoeing. Oh, that sounds like a plausible thing. You feel empowered and you go out and you go. And then if you do it right, then you get some results back and it makes you feel good. And then you go around again and you invest some more time into it and then you get maybe good feelings. And it's a little bit like, you know, when you hear people exactly like say, oh, you know, we're, we're screwed, you know, there's no point in doing that. That's because the, I guess, I guess the system has just put so damp and just really crushed down people's feeling of, of able to, you know, it's disempowered them simply. And actually it's made them feel like there's no point. But then if we can come along, and I think we have done, Extinction Rebellion have done an amazing job of that. It's, it's empowered thousands of people. It's empowered, you know, thousands of, of you know old school activists who were kind of you know maybe just felt a bit jaded and a bit you know down on themselves because it you know their all their efforts hadn't really done anything or hadn't gone as far as they wanted them to i guess lots of people seem to come back and and and, and feel good because this is actually a credible plan it, no one's saying it's the best thing to do because we don't know and it's just exactly the same in sport you just have to make your best guess as to what is going to send you in the direction that you want mm -hmm. and then you 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 know you, you try and go at it and you know when you're when you're losing faith or when you're losing motivation then you have to kind of look at yourself and go right is what i'm doing today you know can i think of anything better to do today that's going to help me to get to where i want to be and there's no use in kind of crying about it going well it's not working if you can't think of anything better then you know you've got a choice you can either carry on trying to do it and hoping that you know you're going to figure out something new or you stop and it's really the same in, in I believe in the same in, in this movement. We've got to keep figuring out what is the most sensible, plausible thing to do towards getting us to this to this place where we, you know, have a basically a just, sustainable future for us all. And we've got to just admit that it's a guess and we've got to be humble and try and change and 
that in itself is a really good feeling. It makes, makes me feel good. If you really understand that you can't actually control what's going to happen, all you can control is the choices that you make and the guesses that you make. And you try to make the best guesses you can, knowing you're not going to be 100% successful. And so for me, that kind of feels quite cool. And I suppose this right now, what we're going through, you know, this lockdown, this COVID-19, I think it is empowering people, a lot of people, perhaps a lot of people, it's really ruining their entire lives. You know, if you're precariously employed, you know, and, and out there on the front lines, this is, this is brutal. But for a lot of people who are just basically, you know, working from home and experiencing a quite a different quality of life, there's going to be some serious uncertainty in things, but it's actually reaffirming some of the, you know, faith in humanity and maybe in the faith in community or maybe even a faith in themselves that they can actually live in this way. And it's actually not too bad. And that's empowering. And that, I suppose, paves the way for further kind of, efforts in this direction so i am actually quite hopeful and i think it's fantastic you know see hearing people clapping for the nhs this is showing that communities still exist and actually we can pull together you know in this sort of spirit and i think that's really powerful because that makes people feel good and that makes people feel like actually you know there's still some goodness about because i think one of the most you know one of the most pernicious things of of this toxic system is it's basically convinced people that we're actually really bad that we can't do anything about it and that what we've got is where we're headed and it's not going to work and actually we're kind of saying actually no and i'm saying no i actually believe in human potential i believe that we can and you know another world is possible and that we're kind of trying our very best towards making that actually happen and you know to some degree we've we've succeeded already with showing a few things but we've still got a hell of a long way to go and but i'm dedicated to the task as are you know thousands of other rebels and, and, and thousands and thousands around the world i guess i guess as a sportsman it is just a matter of good sportsmanship you know and it's like i, I mean guess when you're at the olympics as well there's all of these people from all over the world wanting to achieve the same thing but at the end of the day, I mean, that feeling, what the feeling of when you were given your gold medal, I guess, was just probably you had a huge respect for everyone you were competing with as well. And this yeah. community of individuals around the world, um, it kind of shows that we're all in the same basket at the end of the day. Yeah, well, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, sports is cool, but it is about competing, you know, and climbing, climbing. But I suppose there is different ways of competing. And I actually believe that, you know, there is ways of competing where you, you know, you try and tear down your opponents, you know, um, and there's other ways of competing where you try to lead the way and forge a path, you know, and I suppose I often talk about this, you know, it's kind of leadership. Sports is actually about leadership. It's not, it's not about telling people what to do. It's about showing people what can be done and actually, you know, being that, being that thing that you're hoping to be. And for me, you know, when we are competing, it is actually very natural to want to like tear down your opponents. I think it's maybe that's a part of not, maybe not natural, but I don't know, perhaps, perhaps, I don't know, but I felt like that. That was a constant, a constant temptation to go down that road. And it was very difficult. And I can't say I, I didn't, you know, didn't go down there a few times, but I was also very committed to the idea of wanting to be the best that I could be and do the very best thing that I could do in the ways, you know, embodying, you know, and I, 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 you know, exiles principles, values, but I had values that for me, I had identified and I wanted to live up to those things. I wanted to be a particular sort of person on my way to where I was hoping to get. And actually I believed that it was more important to be the right, you know, to behave the right way than to actually succeed in the end. Although I dearly, dearly wanted to succeed at the end. But I suppose if you fail and you've been sound, it's better than succeeding and being, you know, uh, uh, you know there's all sorts of words i could use some unpleasant person you know so for me uh you know the, the, the olympics is incredible because there is this sort of idea it's a global thing yeah you know and people are competing but this is the ideals of the olympics and i can actually i do actually believe in many ways olympics has been corrupted by by money and and all sorts of things as well but actually sport is about human potential it's about the beauty of what human beings can do and actually sport is really interesting because people think it's all about challenge 
and that's the only thing that you have you know you if you put a lot of pressure onto somebody you know they will climb and they will get better and some people will fall and and, and, and fall by the wayside but actually success requires a balance of of of, of challenge and support and every person's got a different kind of calibration point and that calibration point is different you know so for me something's very very challenging i don't know i don't like heights for example i need a lot of support to handle these you know going up and, and some somewhere high but going down a rapid that would absolutely terrify somebody doesn't require a lot of support for me but if you can get that right you know if you can balance challenge and support basically a person can kind of push be pushed or they can push themselves to a higher a higher height and to you know amazing new ground if they feel kind of safe and supported to do so and so one side of sport that a lot of people don't really see is the huge amount of support that goes behind you know these very challenging and intense kind of efforts and so for me that's something interesting because I think that our world right now you know maybe our society sorry should I say is set up very much to be a hard brutal challenging place and the support side is kind of something a bit lacking but actually we're seeing right now in, in fact in this crisis you know we're having there's probably quite a bit of support out there perhaps not enough for a lot of people and, and, and certainly not enough for an awful lot of people but actually we're seeing that actually you know we can respond in this way when we've got a little bit of help and we can kind of go be better and do quite you know some quite remarkable things going on even in my area right now you know there's some amazing you know there's a community support system has been set up and a lot of people would have said my area oh it's a bit rough and you know it's not super cool but actually it's done amazing you know and that's really cool and so for me that's how kind of embodies that idea of you know pushing it and then supporting and it can it can help you know so for me that's really nice i think yeah and going from that i i, I one of the things that's you know i, I guess what i'm trying to to ask is i when when a lot of people see the actions of extinction rebellion you know they'll see these people gluing themselves to thing ris risking arrest and they'll be like oh my god you know you're almost risking your freedom and i mean like even something like slalom canoeing i can imagine can, can really put you at risk i mean you said that you've had some injuries mm. but i mean i guess having those injuries and overcoming them is also like I'm, i remember like when i was first getting into activism i was like i, I was you know i'm a wildlife activist I like going around chasing butterflies. The idea of getting, you know, arrested and putting in the police van was not part of, you know, something that I was into. Mm. So an important part of this isn't just overcoming the crisis that we face, but sometimes overcoming ourselves. Absolutely. And what are, to those people who might feel a bit, you know, and, and it's important that people go at their own pace, but what advice would you give to someone that to, to maybe get them involved in? protesting or get them or even just not protesting getting involved with fighting this crisis that affects every every single one of us mm. yeah i mean look I, I again i'm really not into like telling people what to do i never really done that you know i, I like to kind of sh explain to people why i've done what i've done you know i think that's really good way of doing things and being trying to be really kind of credible and, and, and authentic in doing that and so i just say to people look just learn about the situation you know learn about first of all the situation that we're in the, the environmental crisis that we're in you know learn about you know you, you don't need to be a climate scientist you don't need to be a, a you know a, an ecologist to figure out about this stuff you can find out about the sixth mass extinction you can find about how many species are being eradicated you know each year compared to normal you can find out about um what's going to happen if we go above 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial level you know temperature um rise and you know we can you can kind of learn about these things and then what i sort of say is like just think about what actually means to you and what you want to do because everything you want to do right now with your life every dream that you have every hope that you have for yourself and for every other person that you know all the people that you care about all the things you'd like them to do with their lives that sadly is not going to work out in that way you know and dreams don't often work out that's true you know but the things you might want to do just to live a peaceful and, and content life if you find out about this you're going to if you really actually get down to it you're going to find out that it's not really going to work out like that unless we change and then the next question i say to people look just kind of do a bit of 
figuring out what has what has not worked so far you know what has not worked and actually quite a it doesn't take very long either to kind of come to the conclusion that you know, voting hasn't really worked, marches hasn't really worked, petitions haven't really worked, you know, kind of lobbying, other sorts of, you know, some sorts of activism have done some good, but they haven't really, you know, flattened this curve that we're on right now, and it's a different curve than the COVID-19 curve. And then that's when I came to the kind of, you know, realisation that nonviolent direct action seems to be very sensible in that situation. I think actually where we're at right now in this in this crisis, I think the world is changing around us, and what exactly is going to be the right way of moving it on from there is, is interesting. You know, I think that that's that's going to be that's going to be a whole other question. But to me, I just say look, learn about things, and I actually again, this is my faith in humankind. A lot of we're really good at denying things, right? We're good at you know trying to swerve away from those hard truths. But if you actually get hold of a few of these facts and information i actually think the next step kind of is very clear to most people you know once they actually kind of realize this oh my word then they go all right and then the next step and then the next step and then the next step and then if you kind of follow it through to its kind of natural conclusion i sort of guess a lot of people will find themselves around this scene of, of extinction rebellion because it's actually responding in a plausible way to what is a really horrendous situation and so I, that's how I suppose I would do, you know, I just say to people, look, just get, try and and, and, and speak to people and, and watch videos or, and learn things. You've got to have some credible sources, fair enough, but we're not, we're not miles away. You know, it's actually, there's a lot of stuff out there. And once you know, if you actually realize and you have a sort of sense of what's right and wrong and you have a sense of, you know, love for people that you care about and love for yourself, you know, that you want to do stuff. I think it kind of becomes not self-evident, but it becomes a little bit easier to make the next logical step. That's it, I suppose, for me. I think that that was a very humble answer, by the way, Etienne. A uh, beautiful answer. I think something that I something that I'm, I'm conflicted with, and I suppose what I was trying to say before is that there there are many people that that are in denial um, about this environmental crisis even though the science is like in everyone's faces mm. and, um, and it's absolutely fine to feel that way like once you've once you're confronted with like the facts it's fine to feel that way and and it's easier to sit back and be in denial or kind of um push it to the back of your mind which is mm. something that going back to what i've said several times in this this inter this interview is is um what some people might think when they they can't achieve winning gold at the olympics yeah but how, how you know how would you this is a very difficult question but what would your answer to be to someone in denial even if there's part of them that does believe in it because yeah. I've, I've been there many times i've been and, and and i can also almost see people having the battle the argument in their head um do you think there is a yeah. Right, right way of communicating i suppose you know that, that i suppose i come back to what i said earlier you know i think you've got to show people mm. you know you can't make people do things you can't make them think something yeah. you've got to show it they got to you know they got to show it they got they got to see it and perhaps they got to feel it as well you know so i think that that's why when we're doing or when i'm doing the, some of the things that i do and and you know more broadly some of the things that we're doing it kind of shows people and they maybe they, it stirs them, you know, inspiration, I guess, this is something that as well I talk about a bit, you know, inspiration is like kind of secretly identifying with something that you see, right? You see it and you kind of think, ah, oh, actually, I kind of know what that is. I've felt a little bit of that before. And then you think, actually, why couldn't I get some more of that? You know, so to me, this feeling, you've, you've got to show people give that sort of sense that this is a plausible and sensible thing to do in that but a really authentic and clear way and i don't i don't think you can change people's mind you can only just show them really clearly that this alternative is is good you know and is actually worthwhile doing and then you're not going to necessarily switch people around 
there and then but you're kind of loosening there you're kind of like making a little bit of space and then this happens again and and other times they'll see other things and at some point you know the penny is kind of going to drop i think for most people but by then we might be up to our ankles in water and you know dead canaries as they say i don't know but a lot of people on their way before that point will actually kind of go yeah we think these people have got a point and they're doing it in this way that is actually pretty persuasive because they're not hiding it you can you know our agenda is clear our kind of our conduct is, or I'm, you know, I say, I hope my conduct is worthy of the task that I'm engaged in. And I'm committed to trying to do it in that, you know, in, in the best way that I can with the, you know, and, and I think that to me appeals to human nature because, you know, courage calls to courage everywhere, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, things, things get un, into people's heads because they see, and that's what human potential is, isn't it, right? You know, people just have an idea. It's a tiny idea kind of goes off in someone's brain and they go right I'm going to do that you know and it might just start with the smallest thing and it might and then it grows and it grows and it grows and I suppose that's our job is to to show you know to, to scatter these seeds everywhere around these ideas that something is possible to do in this basically this dire situation and that even that's the cool thing about sports people think it's about winning or losing but as you go as you, as you go along you kind of realize that just doing it is worthwhile in itself you know at some point in fact in sports you have to kind of make make peace with the fact you're not going to be successful you're not going to win the olympics but then you kind of find out actually living this way authentic to my goals authentic to my the way i want to be is a really wonderful way of living it's a way of thriving in fact in lots of respects and i suppose this to me kind of links a little bit with this regenerative cultural idea it's like okay we don't know if we're going to manage to to be successful in fact we know we're not going to save everything it's, you know things are going to get messed up real bad but on the way to that place we can grow as a society we can grow as individuals we can develop as you know into more you know fundamentally more humane a more beautiful way of living that is actually going to work better and it might not work all the way it might not be successful in completely you know getting to utopia but actually we'll find something really worthwhile on the way to that place and who knows because you know we, we're gonna i think that to me that's that seems quite sensible i, I can i can identify with that and i i feel that's i'd rather live in that world than one that just says yeah i'm i'm gonna give up that's like saying i want to win the olympics and just not not going to the gym just staying sat in your seat it's like well what do you want do you want to survive do we want to do you want to build a better society in which case we've got to make some take some steps right now get out so get out of the city and let's let's get to work well like you said you know spreading those seeds and you know it is it is having that seed it, ha it is having that moment of inspiration um but it, it's nurturing that seed it's like you said mm -hmm. it's making that seed grow so it comes to the surface not yeah. just piling more soil onto it and sitting on your sofa so mm. i guess we might have covered this but do you think there's an, uh, uh, the right way of nurturing things of, of you know like i said before there's the, the, there's that like people might feel that inspiration mm. but there's so many things piled on top of it that the seed won't see the light of day yeah i mean i think that's the interesting thing i suppose in in, in sport it's about you know you are in a sort of way of trying to like look after yourself and and trying to make that thing happen it's a little bit different in, in some ways but i suppose what I, one of the things i what i like about xr is that it's kind of really hard baked into our dna is to like look after each other look after ourselves and tr you know that's really hard we're under all you know we're under some pressure here you know there's some serious intensity behind what we're doing but it's trying to like look after each other make this sense of community because actually that's what the support is you know we've got an epic challenge we need an epic amount of support and i think the other thing that i suppose is really nice is to to recognize that you know this kind of compassionate way of looking at people and trying to understand you know this toxic system understand the oppression the layers and the, the slices of it all the way through is that people who are you know kind of ranged against us or you know perhaps just don't really quite get what we're doing i don't believe they're bad people they just haven't quite seen all the things that 
that I've seen yet because I think a lot of them would find it quite persuasive and then they might change their minds actually quite easily if they did. So it's about kind of that compassion and showing that it kind of allowing people to go on this journey kind of, you know, and we're all on this journey. There's people way out ahead of me and there's a lot of people behind as well. And we're all on this journey. We've got to kind of, we've got to kind of strive forwards, but we've got to help people along who, who are behind us. And that is a sort of every day we've got to do a bit of both of those things. And we can't never stand still either because that's not going to work either. So for me, it's a, it's that whole idea of a journey and, and trying to look out for people and also, you know, look ahead and go, man, this is, let's keep focused on what we're trying to do. You know, let's not lose sight of that, but also, you know, there's no point in going there on your own. Right. So to me, it's, uh, to me, it makes sense. This kind of supporting each other is the only real sensible thing to do because I suppose, I don't know if you guys have watched cool runnings. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a saying in there, you know, it says, you know, if you, if you're not enough, um, without a gold medal, then you won't be enough with a gold medal. And that's one of the most, you know, really telling sayings in this uh, in this in this film. And it's like, yeah, the ends. It's like saying, you know, you've got to be. We've got to be worthy. We've got to get there in a good way. We've got to get there in good style. Otherwise, there's kind of no point in getting there. <laughs> so uh, I think that's a really nice thing to to think about. And you know, we've got to we've got to be healing ourselves and healing our 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 world all along as we go so yeah i yeah i agree i think what you were saying about we can't stand still i think this is the um this is the dna of extinction rebellion it's keeping the momentum it's why we keep doing protests and um as somebody that was there the anniversary a year ago in april and i've been to protests and there's a lot of people saying extinction you know Extinction Rebellion have gone too far, you know, you know, you, you, you got to stop blocking roads. But at the same time, when I've been at those protests, there's been a lot of people that are like, who are you? What are you doing? Mm. How bad is this crisis? And it is a matter of like, you're not going to, you know, um, inspire someone to understand the, the devastation of this crisis at once. It's repeating yourself. It's doing these things again and again. Mm -hmm. um so people do take notice and people do take notice if you're getting on the streets um so i think you're absolutely right that, that, that it is about keeping the momentum and not standing stay yeah you've got to keep chipping away right you know and 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 again i sort of feel like it's a little bit like it's the same in sport but it's the same for me right now i sort of think well what what am I going to do? I can't stop. You know, I still think we've got a place to go. I still think I believe passionately that, you know, a nicer, a nicer, fairer, happier world is possible. And Extinction Rebellion has got, a, you know, good, really good organized, you know, good organization, lots of good things about it. Of course it's, you know, it's got its struggles and it's got its pains and it's got lots of difficulties, but bottom line is it's really, it's really necessary and that is not going to go away because people know, especially right now it's being revealed how messed up things are when, you know, people's lives, people's health is being um, put behind the, the, the health of our economy basically and choices being made. People are realizing that people are actually seeing these, you know, these strange benefits of, of what's been happening during this lockdown. There's a lot of people aren't, again, who are really, really, really suffering in this lockdown, no doubt. But that experience is going to show people that this other thing is possible. And once they've, they've you know, this is kind of loosening these kind of stones right at the bottom of the, of, of the wall, you know. And I think, that's, I think that's really important. And I suppose you can't, that is doing this is you know doing amazing work in a way to show people that there is this other way of doing things that could actually be quite nice um although the reason we've got here is horrible and what's going on right now is you know totally miserable but actually there's other things about what's happened that people will go actually yeah i think that was a you know there's some parts of that that were actually good and i would like to keep them i would like to find out more about how we could not go back to what we were doing before and how we could make something even more cool going forward so i think there's an interesting i mean we're in a crazy time right and there's all sorts going on so i don't know what's going to happen but i think that you know you can't deny a lot of people will have experienced some profound vulnerability but also 
some people will have experienced a profound sense of something different and that's all that we're asking for right you know you know something different is possible and now let's let's have a proper talk about it yeah i guess gotta keep gotta keep going forward why's the finish line's actually in sight this time or i guess gotta keep canoeing forward in your case <laughs> yeah no etienne it's been lovely chatting with you um it is now 8 30 i know we said we wrapped things up at 8 30 i don't know if there's anything that you would like to finish on uh or say to our audience mm. um well i suppose uh what i would say is you know thanks to anybody who's you know watched and listened i hope that i've said some interesting things i hope that i've not dropped any clangers i also hope that um people just what we're doing i believe is amazing you know i think exit rebellion what the you know what we're engaged in is the most incredible thing and i'm incredibly proud and everybody i meet so many people i meet it's just this is a cool thing we're doing and you know we gotta we gotta we gotta look out for each other we gotta nurture it and we gotta keep an eye on the future but i'm just really proud to be a part of it and you know i met you just a few weeks ago and it's like man you know there's some really cool people here and this is where the action is man let's press on <laughs> Same to you, man. It was, was, was great to meet you. And uh, yeah, like um, it, was it was great for you to make, in, to make the time to chat today. Really appreciate it. Um, if you want to shoot any more questions Etienne's way, you're at Etienne Stott on Twitter, aren't you? Yeah, man. That's your handle. Yeah, shoot him that way. Um, as I always say, we've, we're really starting to get the mechanisms together for um, East, XR East of England TV. Um, we're going to be having a live schedule coming out on our website very soon. Um, we'll be doing discussions every Thursday at a time between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. So be sure to tune in every Thursday. Um, and yeah, please, if you want updates on XRTV, um, do follow our social media. It's XRT, um, Extinction Rebellion East of England on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And if you want to watch this live stream again, it will be available on our YouTube channel, which is just XRTV EOE. And you can recap everything we've said. Um, so on that note, thank you to everyone. A huge thank you for, to Etienne for joining us on our live stream today. And best wishes. And we'll see you next Thursday, if not sooner. See you later. Cheers, Etienne. Bye. <laughs> see you, man. Bye. <laughs>